Hello, this is Mr. Huff, and I want to do uh, a real quick part to help you get started with Inventor. I want to show you how to do some extrusions, uh, both additive and subtractive, and maybe apply some dimensional constraints uh, and give you some advice about using Inventor, uh, especially when starting out. Make sure you're in your playground project, and that way the parts you make are going to be uh, stored as practice parts that are not part of a project. So the first thing I'm going to do is choose new and in this template window that pops up I'm going to be using the standard IPT part. So this is a standard part template so we double click on that and Inventor will load the object browser and the graphics window like this and the first thing I want to do is think about my part. For your assignments, you're generally going to have something that has uh, some sort of um, dimensions identified. Uh, you usually are working from a list of measurements. Uh, this is going to be a little bit random. So let's see. I'm going to make something that looks similar to one of the objects that uh, is shown in um, the presentation about how to model. So. First thing I'm going to do is start a 2D sketch and my preference is to work on this XY plane. Notice how you have three planes here. We have the XY plane, the YZ plane, and the XZ plane. So this is uh, the planes you need to define a three-dimensional object. I generally use this because this would be the front of an object. Uh, another thing when you're drawing is be sure you start your drawings from the origin. And this way, your coordinates will be sensible if you always start from this point. I'm going to choose a 2D rectangle. So I click on this and I left click and drag and release the left click. And then I need to, I want to type in some specific dimensions. So I want to make something that's three inches wide and two inches tall. So I type in three and two, hit tab, and then enter. So that's going to make my rectangle. If I choose the finish sketch button and choose home, I will see that I have a nice three by two uh, rectangle. Now I want to make this an inch thick. So I'm going to choose extrude and I'm going to click on that. It usually will go with the last sketch that you uh, made. And in this case, it's already set to one inch and that's good. All right. I'm going to choose home again and that will let me work right here. So I want to get rid of a little corner here that's a one by one square. So I'm going to start a 2D sketch and I'm going to choose this face. All right, I'm going to hold down my center click on my mouse and drag this down so I can see it. Or you could use F2 and left click and pan that around however you want. I'm going to choose a two point rectangle and I'm going to lock it into the top right corner when that turns green that's what I want. I'm going to left click and drag and release and I'm going to type in the numbers 1 and 1 and then hit return. Okay so now I have a 1 by 1 square. I'm going to choose finish sketch. Notice how this one is highlighted blue so it's the one that we are selected right now so I want to hit extrude and I don't want it to come out I want it to go in. So right here I'm telling it to go uh, exactly one inch another let's look at some of these other things I could go to next and what that's going to do is find the next face and terminate there and you could put to a face or between faces or all so the distance of one inch is perfect for this right now so what I'm doing is I'm removing that material uh, the next thing I want to do is put a one inch block starting at this bottom left corner so now we're going to choose 2d sketch and we're going to choose this face and I'm going to choose a two-point rectangle choose that corner see how it turns green it's locked in there drag the mouse out a little bit and type in the numbers one and one and hit return and now I have a one by one square hit finish sketch and then we're going to extrude that one inch okay so there is my part uh, let me show you a couple of other cool things you can do here. Um, right now it's using generic material. You can change that to glass. You can change it to, which I don't recommend because it's kind of confusing when you look at the drawing. 
Uh, I like to use ABS plastic because it gives you a nice contrast for everything. Uh, so this, you can choose different materials here in this list. You can also look at the Autodesk Materials Library and see different things here. So you have uh, choices. I think when it's in a larger view, you can see actually samples of what color that's going to be. So you can uh, look at, you know, SEM plastic. Oh wow, that's really cool. And but I'm going to go back to all the way up to ABS plastic. Another thing you can do is there's a little rainbow circle here. You can choose, no, that's not the one I want. Close that. This one, it's got the little, this is called adjust. And if you choose that, uh, you can make a color that you like. So I'm gonna choose like a blue color here. And I'm going to point at this when it's got the wireframe and choose that. And, oh, that's selected. Now I can choose a color and I can make it any color I want. And so this is just like a color selector in most art programs. You have your saturation, which makes it more towards gray or super dark, and you can make it more blue or more gray. So you can kind of get lots of color variations there. So this will, this is a way for you to color your parts. Uh, when you're done, be sure to click OK. You'll see this a lot in Inventor. It'll have this little check mark, and it won't keep it until you choose OK. So now I have a colorful part uh, that I made using uh, the extrude, a negative extrude and a positive extrude are adding and subtracting. And hopefully this will be enough to get you started.